Welcome to our class for today. I am taking business studies and we are continuing on our topic on shorthand. The last time we discussed, we talked about the meaning of shorthand, the historical development of shorthand, the system used in shorthand, and we talked about the importance of shorthand. Today, we are going to discuss consonants. What is consonant in shorthand? Because the explanation and the definition we give to consonants in shorthand is quite different from what you have in your normal English language. After that, we will take the first five consonants. We will know how many consonants we have in shorthand and we will talk about the vowels. Then, how are they represented in shorthand? So let us start this class by first explaining what a consonant is. What is a consonant? In shorthand, consonants are strokes representing spoken sounds. Strokes. If you remember in our last class, I told you that we represent spoken words with symbols. Strokes, dash, and dots. So consonants is a representation of spoken sounds. And in shorthand, we have 24 consonants and 12 vowels. 24 consonants. And they are represented by strokes or curves. They are represented by strokes or curves. Strokes are written in horizontal forms. Curves are written in a curve form. As you go further in your study of business studies, you're going to see how they are represented by curves and strokes. Now, let us take the first set of our consonant uh, uh, consonants, since we know that there are 24 consonants. But at this year level, we are concentrating on the first group of consonants, which are six in numbers. The first group of consonants are six in numbers. So we are concentrating on that six consonant at this just one stage. After this stage, you will take the other groups and you will get to know the 24 consonants. What are the, 20, what are the first six groups of consonants? We have them as P, B, T, D, Ch, J. I'm going to use this small pictorial illustration to help you understand how it is written. You see a, a line this way and another this way, then a vertical line at the center. If you're able to remember this format of line, you will remember how to write the four six consonant. This is to simplify how you write the four six consonant. The arrow that goes on this, if you see my arrow at the black board, at the white board, you see that the arrow goes this way. The arrow that goes this way represents your P and B consonant. It is written here, P and B consonant. This vertical one here at the center represents your T and D consonants. And this one that has its slants form this way is represented by G and G uh, consonant. And G, Ch, and G represent that consonant. Now, in shorthand, the first principle is that consonants are represented by strokes and curves. And we have the light strokes and the dark strokes. So, in this uh, group of consonants, we we'll have it at this. The P. The P, P is represented by a light stroke. If you look at the white ball critically well, you see that this is lighter than this. The arrow I put is for you to know the angle you are writing it to. It moves from up to down. From up to down. And it takes this form, and that's why the arrow is pointing to the down. So when you are writing it, hold your pencil and drag that. Hold your pencil and drag that. 
hold your pencil and drag that. So move from up to bottom, not from bottom to up. No, from up to bottom. Then the P, the B. Remember, I told you. Then the B is represented by a heavy stroke, not a light one. The B takes the light. The B takes the heavy uh, stroke. The T is a light stroke that goes horizontal. The D is a heavy stroke that still goes horizontal. Um, sorry, vertical. This goes vertical, straight line. Horizontal is this way, sorry. The vertical. It's a light vertical line. And this is a dark vertical line. Ditch is a light, slight stroke. Light stroke. Ditch is a heavy stroke. So if you look at the colors, this is heavy, this is light, this is heavy, this is light, this is heavy, this is light. So now, remember this diagram. It takes this format and this format. By the time you remember this format, you will be able to write your four six consonant. You can just slide it down and see how you'll be able to write it. Then you have the P that has a light stroke, the B that have a heavy stroke, the T that have a light stroke, the D that have a heavy stroke, the G that have a light stroke, and the G that have a heavy stroke. That is how our first group of six consonants are written. Now, remember I told you that we are taking the first six groups. That is what consigns your level. After this level, we will go to the second group and the third group, then the fourth group. There you will see the curves and more strokes. Then, they are all straight strokes. The first six consonants are straight strokes. They are not curves. They are just straight strokes. If you see here, I said they are straight horizontal strokes. They are straight horizontal strokes. All right? So this is for the first uh, six consonants. Now, how do we join our vowels and our consonants? How do we join our consonants? Remember I told you that the consonants are written in these forms. We can bring in two and join them. Now let me show you an example. We have the P and B. You see the P, it's a light stroke. Then the B, it's a heavy stroke. So the P and B have taken its strokes. This is my line in the book. Let's assume this is my normal vertical line in my book. This is how I write the shorthand, the P and the P. I have joined the two consonants together. Don't worry, we will get to see how you use it to write words. Words like page, page. We will get to join them as you progress in your shorthand class. Now I'm joining T and D. The T is light, the D is heavy. I'm joining Ch and J. The Ch is light, the Ch is heavy. Don't mind my marker, my marker can uh, be some deceitful, but just get the principle that the P is a light stroke, the B is a heavy stroke, the T is a light stroke, the D is a heavy stroke, the Ch is a light stroke, the Ch is a heavy stroke. So when you are joining, make sure that your pencil is lighter in the P and the T is heavier. The same thing, make sure your pencil is lighter in the T than the D, it is heavier. I want you to do an assignment for me. Drill the first six consonants in five different steps. And make sure you remember the principles of the heavy and the light stroke. The heavy strokes and the light strokes. Remember the light strokes are P, T, Ch. P, T, Ch. And the heavy strokes are B, D, Ch. So as you are writing it, be mindful of that. 
Now, having seen how we join our normal consonants, you see how the consonants are joined together. How I join my P and B, how I join my T and D, how I join my Ch and G. And I probably remember how they go. If you see my diagram here, they move like this. This slant this way, the big slant this way, the big slant same way. The T slant straight, the D slant straight. The Ch slant this way, the Ch same way. So remember how they are written. Haven't seen the first six consonants, the first group of consonants. Don't remember, don't forget our definition of a consonant in shorthand. That consonants are represented by strokes. They are represented by strokes. And they represent the spoken words. Strokes are used to represent the spoken words. And don't forget that we have 24 consonants and 12 vowels. Now let's go to the vowel sounds. Let's look at the 12 vowel sounds we have in shorthand and their positioning. We have the first place vowel, the second place vowel, and the third place vowel. The first place vowel, let's assume I have, this is my notebook, and I am writing PB. I wrote P and I wrote B. And I'm to place a vowel sound. Any vowel sound I place here is my first place vowel. Any vowel sound I place here is my second place vowel. And any vowel sound I place here is my third place vowel. So these are the positions in first place, second place, third place. Now let's go on with our class. Don't forget, here, outline written this way. This is the first place, this is the second place, this is the third place. So the positioning we are taking now. The first place vowel is a long R sound. Calm. It's represented by a heavy dot. The next one is a short R sound represented by a light dot, as in attach, map. And the R is short R. In your English phonetics class, you must have learned the vowel sound. This is a short R sound, as in palm. This is a short R sound, as in attach, 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 short. And the short one is presented by a light dot, while the long one is presented by a heavy dot. The next one is the R sound. The next vowel sound is the short R sound. Ball, low, low, short. Uh, the, sorry, the long R sound. Ball, low. And it's represented by a heavy dash. The long the uh, long all sound. Then we we'll have this one as the short all sound. Dog. Dog. Sorry, this is the long one, not the short one. The long. This is the short all sound. Dog. Job. Why this is law. Ball. The short. Then the long one sounds that are represented by a heavy dash is the long sound. Why the one represented by a large dot? It's the E sound. Most times, the ones that have the long sound goes with the heavy signs, either the heavy dash or the heavy dot. The second place vowel, every vowel here is the first place vowel. That means it is going to be written at the first position of the outline. The second one, it's the second place vowel. The second place we'll have as in ape, a, the long a sound, which is represented by a heavy dot. It is represented by a heavy dot. The long a sound is represented by a heavy dot, as in ape, day, long sound. It's always coming with the heaviness of your sound, and it's represented by a heavy dot. And remember, I said it's a second place forward. That means in your outline, it will come in this position. Then we'll have the the short E sound is represented by a light dot. Death. Jet. E, the E sound is short. Then we'll have the long O sound represented by a heavy dash. And we'll have an example of 
Old. Bold. Old sand. Heavy dash. So always remember that those ones that have the long sand are always going with the heavy dash or heavy dot. We have the who sand. The short who sand as in up. Up. Us. Us. It's represented by a light dot. All these are second place for our sand. Then we'll go to the last, which are the third place for our sand. We'll have the long E. Eat. Teach. Represented by heavy dots. Then we'll have the next one. The short E. Not the E. This is the long one. E. But this is the short one. E. As in if. As in milk. It has a sound of E, but light. And it's represented by a light dot. E sound, as we can see in if and in milk. And it's represented by a light dot. Now we'll have the long U sound. And it's represented by a heavy dash. I don't know whether you can see the way I painted the dash. The heavy dash, as in food. Food. Poo. And it's written as a third place vowel. So if you are writing your outline, if this is your outline, this is the second your 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 vowel sign the sign is going to come under this third place. This is a third place vowel. Then we we'll have the short U sound as in book. It's not as long as the U book look short U sound and it's presented by a light dash. So this is the twelfth consonant. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So go practice them. Which have the heavy dot, which have the heavy dash, which uh, it's a short uh, sound, which is a long sound. Know the positioning of where they fall. All these are first place, all these are second place, all these are third place. Thank you for being part of our class today. Remember in shorthand, you must practice to get perfect. So, Always practice so that you can perfect your work. I gave you assignments on drilling of six first consonants. Know the one that is a light stroke, know the one that is a heavy stroke. I use a small illustration to illustrate how you can remember them. And I showed you the 12 vowel sounds. We have 24 consonants and 12 vowel sounds. I showed you the first place vowel, the second place vowel, and the third place vowel. Go over this video many times so that you can get conversant with it. Until I come your way next time, we'll go to the typewriting aspect of shorthand of um, business studies. We are done with the shorthand for your level just one. When we meet again in just two, we'll take a further step into your shorthand class. So please practice it. We've done the introductory part, I've done the consonant part. Thank you for being here. Subscribe if you have not shared.